Welcome into the Cougar Tailgate, where BYU fandom lives. Here's your host, Lauren McLean. What's up, everybody? It's good to be with you on this beautiful Saturday. We're continuing our interviews from the BYU Football Media Day for 2022. And up a little later, we're going to have defensive ends coach Preston Hadley. But first, I'm here with the pride of Chandler, Arizona, BYU senior star wide receiver Gunnar Romney. What's up, Gunnar? Not much. Doing good. Are you the pride of Chandler? You know, I, it's well, it's funny because I only lived in Chandler for like a year and a half. Really? Yeah, but I mean, that's just where I claim. I lived in Texas for the majority of my high school career, but just finished my last two seasons in Chandler, so that's where I claim. Oh my gosh, I'm so curious how that works. Like, because everyone obviously has to put the high school and where they came from. Mm-hmm. Like, would you put Texas if you were allowed to? No, I think just because I graduated okay. from uh, from Arizona, that's, that's where I claim. And, you know, my family's still there. My family's uh, settled in Chandler now, so I, I do claim it. Okay, I love that. It's a good spot. Mm -hmm. It's a really good spot. Last year at this time, uh, did you think you would be sitting here at Media Day doing interviews? No, I mean, uh, (laughs) the uh, the only reason that I thought I would be sitting here is if something bad happened, and so you know, it was it was kind of a a thing where I didn't really want to be back here, Mm -hmm. but now I am. I'm I'm grateful that I'm that I'm here again. What went into your decision to stay at BYU? Um, There was a lot of different factors. Um, You know, it was I felt like it was just the best overall decision for my life. you know, just playing a full season healthy, uh, something that I hadn't done in the last two seasons, it would it would really help my draft stock and, and help with my what's been my dream and playing in the NFL. Um, but also, you know, coming back and graduating from BYU, getting a degree, I feel like that's invaluable. I feel like that's something that no, no matter what I choose to pursue, um, you know, after my time here, I think that's something that I can um, forever say that uh, have pride that I accomplished. Well, regardless of your reasons for staying here, I know BYU fans are ecstatic you came back for another year, and it's so cool that's the last season of Independence. How do you balance that in your mind? BYU is going to the Big 12 next season, and this is your last season in Independence. What what goes through your mind when you kind of think about that? I'm jealous. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm jealous I don't get to play in the Big 12. I think that'd be an awesome opportunity. Um, but, you know, for some of the younger guys, I think it's important that we focus on this season to create momentum going into the Big 12. I um, mean, that's been kind of the conversation is, you know, don't let all the outside hype about that get into your head and, you know, ruin this season or or allow that to affect the way we play this season. Um, you know, and from talking to my little brother who just barely got on the campus, um, who's going to be playing for a couple, the next couple of years up here. Um, you know, I'm, I'm jealous that, that he gets to go through all that. And it'll be really fun developing those new rivalries and developing, um, you know, the just the new play style of the Big 12. So I think it'll be really cool for this program. Essie actually mentioned you by name as just somebody who you've kind of brought BYU to where it's at right now, like how grateful he is to have you headed into the Big 12, which is so cool. And that's awesome that your brother's following your footsteps. You get to live through him a little bit, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I, I think it, it's a really cool experience getting to play with two brothers, you know, one one older brother that I played with uh, for the last three or four years here and then being able to play this this year, my last year with my younger brother who's coming up and able to sort of mentor him a little bit. And then I'll be able to live out the rest of his career and, you know, follow BYU extra closely. You know, I already would have, but having him here will just give me a little bit more motivation to dive into it more deeply. Well, to your credit, you're, you've played in some pretty incredible stadiums at your time at BYU that maybe he won't get the opportunity to do. Yeah. You mentioned uh, Baylor. And he, I think he moved on to Adobe. Is that right? Mm-hmm. But does he still? Do you still like throw the ball with him? Does he still come play catch with you? It's it's funny. So I mean, when when they invited him out to throw at pro day, he hadn't thrown a football for th- <laughs> I think it was three months at that time. Oh he gosh. the first time he threw a football or or worked out was was the day before, just getting the timing down with the, some of the receivers. Um, but and yeah, he killed it. Yeah, you know, he did. He he was unreal. Everybody everybody was kind of shocked that he he still had that in him like <laughs> that. And you know, people were just so so uh per persistent in trying to get him back after that i think everybody wanted him wanted him back really bad after they saw his performance in pro day but no it, it it's it's been it's been different with him you know growing up our entire lives you know we've we've both had the same dream of you know playing division 1 football and so we've both been working towards that together our entire lives but you know now that he's he's accomplished that and moved on um you know it's it's kind of a different dynamic now but it's 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 we still have a really good relationship and we still have um, you know that that brotherly love, and you know, I see him a couple times every single week still. So we've we've been able to still maintain that relationship, and you know I'm just happy for him that he's happy. For sure, good for him. I'm sure that takes a lot of guts to have to walk away from football when it's something you've loved and dreamt of your entire life. So we wish him all the best. You mentioned your injuries the last couple seasons. That's 
one of the toughest things about football is it can take such a toll on your body. How's your body holding up right now? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel the best I've ever felt. That's been my number one focus going into this off season is just listening to my body, listening to every little ache or pain and treating it as if I need to stay healthy, like like I'm in the season. And, you know, that's I think that's played a huge role in the way I felt. And, you know, hopefully going into the season, um, it'll help me because I've never I've never done this before. I've, I've always been the type of person that, you know, if you're feeling a little banged up, you just push through it. You just, you know, um, you just work even harder to, to get over that. But taking sort of a different approach this off season and, and listening to myself and taking extra time to recover, I think it's it's already paid dividends, and I'm hoping that it, it can pay even more during the season. That's so interesting because I feel like the NBA specifically gets so much flack for these guys riding the bench mm, when they have like the a load management. yes, yeah. when they have yeah, like a pulled hammy or whatever it is. But obviously, you know how it is when you like when you see guys like Steph Curry and LeBron James sitting out for so long. Do you understand that? Do you get them now? You're like, I'm so glad they're doing that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you see LeBron. He's I don't know how old he is now, but he's been playing at he's such a yeah such seven. a high level for so long and. Part of it is because he's he's so good at, at listening to his body and understanding that, hey, like if I run my body down anymore, I could have a serious injury, which could, you know, potentially take me out for an entire season. And so, I mean, that's kind of the background to my philosophy going into this offseason is, you know, all those all those pros, they're they're unreal at, at recovery and, and rest. And, and in that department there, that's what makes them professionals. For sure. I think that's smart. Let's keep you healthy this season. What's it like for you being one of the only senior leaders in this wide receivers room, because there there's a lot of young guys. I feel like in the core right now. Yeah, I mean it's it's been really cool seeing the transition of the entire program since I came here as a freshman and being able to live through and play through all those experiences that I've had so far just in the last four or five years, um, and then being able to take that and you know give my wisdom as some would call it to to these younger receivers who are really talented. I think we have a really talented room and I'm really excited, you know, going forward to see what all of those guys are going to do because I think a lot of them have really bright futures. Even this year, I think a lot of them are going to make huge contributions. What are some of the main things you mentioned imparting your wisdom on these guys? What are some of the main things they like approach you about? Is it like the playbook? Is it just the culture of BYU or is it just kind of all of the above? Um, all of the above, but I think especially the playbook. I mean, I've, I've had four years of experience now playing under BYU and it's been you know there's been some tweaks to the system under a new offensive coordinator but for the most part it's it's generally the same and so I mean I I know the offense inside and out and so if there's any little detail that they want to ask me about I can tell them I've pretty much ran every single play against every single type of coverage um, so you know if they have a question about that I I've, I've been in that situation before I can help them out and so kind of that experience just like the amount of plays that I've had I can I can help them out with all those little details and perfecting their craft. I'm seriously so stoked that you're back. <laughs> like as a <laughs> fan, you. as no, a fan myself, I'm really excited that you're back. How would you describe your your chemistry with Jaron right now? I think our chemistry right now is is really good. I think it's it's where it needs to be. Last year, this this off season has been a lot different than last off season. I think the number one talk at this point last year was the quarterback competition, mm-hmm. and that made it difficult trying to work with all the quarterbacks, trying to get you know reps and develop chemistry with all the quarterbacks. You know, last season I feel like we developed that good, but having an entire off season working with Jaron, who's the established number one now, who's who's had a year of experience under his belt as a starter, I think going forward with him. I'm really excited for the season because we've had that so much time to just work day in and day out and, you know, on the tiny little details. And we've we've put in hours and hours this offseason just with timing and building that chemistry. So I'm really excited to, to see where it takes us during the season. Seems like there's always a quarterback controversy at BYU, so it's really nice that there's not this season, mm-hmm. which your brother had been involved in for a long time. So now that he's gone, I feel like you can tell us a little bit. Was that hard for you to, like, remain unbiased during that competition yeah you know it it was a little bit just because I have so much love for my brother and I've seen like the amount of work that he puts in and and, you know the passion that he had for the game but then selfishly too it's like you know I'm I'm a receiver I gotta have the the quarterback that's gonna you know perform the best back there to help me perform my best and so it was I kind of had to compartmentalize football Mm -hmm. and, and you know personal life um, but I think the quarterbacks, the way that they all handed, handled it, really helped me handle it better as well. They all had a really good relationship, and they were all completely supportive of one another. And so when Jaron won the starting job last year, it really helped me, you know, accept Jaron 100% as a starter yeah. and develop my chemistry with him. And I, I think it's a huge credit to the maturity of Baylor and Jaron. I feel like the receivers people are talking about are you and Puka Nakua. What do you expect to see 
from him in his second year as a Cougar. He's an unreal athlete. I think he has a, a very, very bright future as a football player. Seeing his development, you know, coming in last year and kind of having to rush to learn the offense and rush to get comfortable with an entire new program. I think this year he, he's taken huge strides in becoming a leader of the receiver room. I, you know, I see him as a leader of the receivers room now. Just as a player, the development that he's had, getting healthy, coming off of a surgery last year and dealing with some minor injuries throughout the entire season last year. Him being healthy and having the year of preparation under this program and, and this new offense, I think he's he's going to have a huge year as well. Both of you are without your brothers now this season. That's yeah. got to be kind of weird. Yeah, no, we've talked about that too. <laughs> Both of us uh, had a brother on the team that's not on the team anymore. And so we've kind of just like, well, all right, you're my brother now. And <laughs> I guess we're brothers now. Yeah, you know, we <laughs> we spend hours and hours and hours together. And so we've really, we've really developed a good relationship. So awesome. You have a little over a month before fall camp starts. What's life like for you until then? Because I know you guys get a little break. What are you going to be up to? Yeah, I mean, I just barely finished my uh, spring semester for classes last week. And so it's really nice. I, I All I have to do in the morning is wake up. We have team workouts and then I have the rest of the day for me. And so I, I you know, I spend probably anywhere from five to eight hours a day on football, whether that's, you know, getting workouts in, watching film, you know, doing hand drills, doing mobility exercises and stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm really grateful for the extra time that I have because it's just allowing me to prepare that much more for going into the season. Man, you're focused. I love it. It's awesome. (laughs) You guys have to stay in such good shape, but I feel like times like the 4th of July, obviously Thanksgiving is a huge one, but there's like some really good summer food that you guys can eat. What's your what's your favorite thing to eat during the summer? Oh, man. I, I love a good just like barbecue, like hot dog, hamburgers, like backyard, just like mm-hmm. uh, all that stuff. And my weakness, I'm, I'm not a sweets guy at all. Like my cake or cookies or candy or anything like that's never tempted me. Like I've, I've, I actually don't enjoy eating that food. Wow. But when there's like... What would that be like? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's honestly not that nice because I can't gain weight. Um, but no, when there's like chips at a barbecue or something like that, I'm the type of person that once I start eating them, I, I cannot stop until the bag's gone. Like I'll eat three or four bags of chips if I, if I get started. It's it's bad. Are you like a Doritos or like a potato chip type guy? I'd say both. I I love spicy food. So if there's like some like spicy Doritos or like hot Cheetos or something like that, I, I can't stop once I get started. But I have this thing where... There's a this hot sauce that I'll put on almost any single food, but if I get like potato chips, I'll just drown it what? and I'll just eat it with hot sauce. It's so good. That's hilarious. I'm with you. I love spicy food. Those spicy Cheetos, I'm like in tears and I'm still so good. Just you can't counting stop. them. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't even. Hundred percent worth it. My last question for you is: the offense has been getting a lot of hype in this off season. Do you feel like it's? Are you confident in the hype? Yes, but we try not to buy into that hype at all. I think it's one of the most important things of trying not to to buy into your own hype because it, it ends up killing you. I mean, you see last year with the bowl game, I think we did a terrible job of handling that. We kind of were all frustrated that we didn't get a bigger bowl game. We kind of went into that game with a negative attitude and, and it killed us. So I think especially this offseason coming off of that bowl game. I think everybody's done a really good job of handling that and just saying, okay, we, we just have to take it one game at a time this year. We're not looking forward to the seventh game on our schedule or, right. or, or any of those things. We're just trying to take it one game at a time, and we have to perform our best in that game during that week. And so I think the maturity of this team is our strength, and so being able to handle that outside pressure and that outside noise is a really important thing for this team. I'm here with BYU senior wide receiver Gunnar Romney. Gunnar, thank you so much for coming on with me today, and good luck with everything that's going on in the summer and for the season as well. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Cougar tailgate. I'm Lauren McLean. He was part of one of the best defenses in BYU history in 2012, where he started every game at corner. He's now the Cougars' defensive ends and hybrids coach and hails from my hometown of Pleasant Grove, Utah. Preston Hadley, thanks for coming on with me, Preston. Hey, appreciate you guys. Do you still rep PG a oh, little bit? All day. Keep it PG. That's you right. Know, there's a saying the kids around town are saying PGOD <laughs> means PG or die, you know? <laughs> Wow, I need to adopt that. I haven't said that yet. I need to start doing that. PGOD. Uh, It's been a decade since you last played football. I don't know if you're aware of that or if you know that. Isn't that right? 2012 was your senior year? How does that make you feel that it's been a decade? blast like that. Dang. You're still not that old. No, if you're I, old, that I, makes I me am. really old. No, so. I mean, I am, but it's all good. The, the games change. I mean, so, some things have changed, but there's there's some things that have stayed the same. 
you know, as far as like the demands of the preparation mm-hmm. and the chemistry that great teams need to, in order to be great and just the strong culture. Um, you know, schematically, though, there's a lot of differences in the game. I mean, it's it's funny, like when I was younger, as a younger coach when I was first getting it, starting out I found myself always kind of relating and drawing from my experience as a player but I hmm. for sure can't do that because I'm coaching another position yeah but the game's just so different now like when I was playing we defended 60 plays a game you know now it's 90 to 100 plays so yeah. just that's just one example of how right. things have changed and, and evolved and and uh, offenses are getting to be pretty dang good I mean they're able to throw the ball while linemen are blocking downfield so it makes it really challenging to defend sometimes <laughs> oh absolutely and your first season was the start of independence and here we are in the last season of independence what do you remember about that first season being like under Bronco Mendenhall I, I remember the excitement you know I felt like I was like already like neck deep in just trying to kind of like find my role and establish my role and just figure out what was going on. But yeah, I just I just remember the excitement and you know, all of a sudden we're traveling coast to coast to play games. I think my first get my very first game ever was against Miss you know, Ole Miss. Hmm. You know, and and obviously, you know, like especially as a player, you know, the repu- the reputation that just any team from the SEC had, just you know, that that those were things on my mind. But um yeah, it's it's pretty crazy to think, you know, like I was here when it started and here when it ends. It's kind of wild, actually. It was so fun to watch the defense in 2012. It really was. I remember it just like it was yesterday because you guys were so dominant. Bronco Mendenhall was kind of known for his defenses as well. From your eyes, from your perspective, I know you don't use this necessarily in coaching anymore, but when you look back, what made that defense so good? Uh, I mean, we had good football players, Yeah. first off. Like, great, great teams, you know, great teams win because they have great players. So I, I think we had great players, but then the amount of ownership that, that we took, and, and it started with having great leaders, you know, guys like Brandon Ogletree, Wono Kavenga, Danny, Kyle, m- you know, me, Zig, like uh, we were, I mean, there was great, there was strong leadership on the team, and there was, like, it was our team, you know, like on defense, like that, that's the one thing, like we knew it was our team. Mm-hmm. And we, and I, I don't know how much it showed up, like, you know, out in the public or anything, but we were actually pretty arrogant. Like, we, I think we actually <laughs> thought we were a lot better than we really were. Like, I, I, I still to this day, well, not to this day, but at that time, I thought I was better than Kyle Van Noy. I was like, I'm, <laughs> I do more for this team. You know, now I'm not, I'm not saying I did. You know, but that was our mindset. He though, might but be everybody, listening. nah, Kyle, man, if he is, dude, I'll square up, man. Nah, um, but no, but that's that was the mindset of everybody on the team. Like, mm-hmm. each of us thought we were the best. And and it, it showed up, and we were competitive, and we were arrogant, and it was our team. And I think anytime players have that amount of ownership, I think you're going to be set up for for having a really competitive football team. That brings up an interesting point because I've always been so curious about that. Because sometimes you look at some of these players and you're like, "All right, bud, you're a little too arrogant. Like you think you're a little too good, but you have to have some of that right to be good." Like you guys mentioned, you maybe weren't as good as you thought, but because you had that attitude. It showed up on the field. What's the balance between that? Especially like when you are coaching your own players, how do you help them balance that? Basically what I what I tell my guys is like, okay, there's there's two ends of the spectrum. All right. There's completely doing your own thing, and then there's completely doing all the coaching. And the great players find that balance in between. Right? Like take here's my coaching, do your thing within the scheme. Yeah. But if you do your own thing, like if you're too far to one end doing your own thing. I, I don't think you're going to reach your potential, and I think if you're too far to just taking all the coaching, you know, I, I think the same thing. You're not going to reach your full potential, and so I, I think that's what we did. You know, I think it was just like I don't know. We were just like we just didn't care, man. Like it was, I mean, it was we we Bronco and Bronco would hold us accountable. I can mm-hmm. think of multiple practices where. We were not doing what he wanted us to do, and and he would hold us accountable. And and but also, you know, in my relationship with Bronco now after, I, I think he actually appreciated that. Like he yeah. liked that, you know. But it's his job as a coach to still hold us accountable. Absolutely. But, um, and I think that's what helped make us so great. And and we were tough, and we all tackled well. But the game was different. We weren't defending as many plays. Yeah. One of the guys you mentioned was Brandon Ogletree. What was it like for you seeing him play in the alumni game after all these years? Oh, it was like nothing changed. Like we all walked <laughs> up, holding hands, hand on the ground, took mm-hmm. the field the right way. Kind of how we were. That's how we taught. That's how we did it. So we we're going to continue to do it. But it, it it was fun. He Tree was actually getting pissed at me because like. 
all of our like Brandon and Criddle and Below and all these guys who were corners, like all of a sudden started tapping out because they were too tired and fat and everything. So Ogletree's playing corner and he's getting pissed at me. I, I remember one time he pulled me off to the side and he's like, "Yo, Diddy, are we gonna we really gonna have an Ogletree Island over here or what are we doing?" I'm like, "Hey, man, like I don't know what to tell you." So it, it brought Some back things never change. It, it brought back great memories. Um, he's a great leader and I don't think he received enough credit for the impact that he had on our defense. You know, not. Out, out, which was outside of just the plays he made, but mm-hmm. just his leadership and who he was. I think we really did take on his personality. I think it started with him. So cool. It's kind of poetic, Preston, that you were at the start of Independence and now you're here at the last se- season of Independence. What do you think you're going to miss most about the Independence era, if anything? I love, like, I actually keep on Google Maps and I have a saved map of every stadium I've ever played at or coached in and I've had the opportunity to go to some really awesome places Mm -hmm. you know some awesome stadiums great football college football environments and so I think just being able to go play coast to coast whether it's at like a place like coastal Carolina or Texas or Tennessee or USC or Washington you know like I've had the opportunity to just kind of go and and see some really awesome venues and being in front of some really great college football environments so I, I think that's the thing that jumps out to me most. I love that. Yes, yeah, some incredible SEC stadiums. Good thing the Big 12 has some great stadiums as well. But when you look back at your time as a player, did you ever think you would wind up back at BYU as a coach? Yeah, no, I, I went most of my career not thinking I wanted to coach football, you know, and I just I didn't think it was something that I was going to do. I, I knew I had in mind what I wanted to do, but it was actually uh, Dwayne Busby approached me near the end of my senior season and he said, have you ever thought about being a football coach? I said, no, not really. And then he said, well, I think you ought to look into it. And so when I finished playing and hung up the cleats for, for good, I came back and worked as a graduate assistant. I just fell in love with, I mean, I was already in love with the game, but I right. fell in love with that side of building something, building people, building a program. And, yeah, it's still surreal. You know, like I, like I said, I grew up cheering for BYU, I, going to the games, like, I'm saying like you know, my my dad's a huge BYU fanboy where like he records he's got every game recorded and like like this last like Father's <laughs> Day he was like rewatching I don't know it was like years ago you know I'm like man how you still have this bro um, yeah it's 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 been a really awesome experience and I I feel very fortunate to to have the opportunity to be a part of it so he hits you up for for tickets and for gear all the time I'm oh, sure this dad. guy's got more gear than I do. <laughs> Like, and I'm bigger than him, so like none of his gear fits because obviously sure, you know sure we know where care. he got it from. And no, this this guy has been a season ticket holder for a long time now, for for a few years now. So freaking, so cool uh, for him. Hey, you gotta have some perks if you have a son as a coach. So what happens in this period after media day until fall camp for you? Do you get a little break? Do you get a vacation? What happens? Yeah, you, you'll find me at Lake Powell. Hey, okay. You'll find me at Lake Powell. So we have some time off, coaches. We're just kind of a chance to like recharge and get ourselves, you know, mentally ready for the the grind of the season. So we'll have that, and then we'll spend some time with our incoming players, our, our new players, and help try to get them up to speed and and see which ones can maybe contribute early. Um, but it's it's a it's a mix of both. So for the most part, you'll find me out the lake. <laughs> hey, that sounds amazing to me. Speaking of the grind, you have just a few months to get this defense prepared for. A schedule with Baylor, Oregon, Notre Dame, Boise State, Stanford, and others. What's the first thing you want to work on with your defense come fall camp? I mean, nothing that they haven't already been working on. I mean, I think our players take a huge amount of ownership in what they're doing. Like guys like Tyler Batty, guys like Earl Mariner, Gabe Summers, John Nelson. You know, the list goes on. Alden Tofa, all those guys, they do a great job and have a, take a lot of ownership of, of this of this of our group and of this team like first day I get in there and tell I tell the boys this is not my group this is not my team this is no coach's team this is your guys's team and our success is contingent upon how much buy-in and how much ownership you guys are going to take and so schematically you know just knowing the playbook the boys you know fortunately with technology like we have a lot of great resources in teaching the scheme to especially the newer players but I mean they take the lead like they're they're out hitting the bag all you know in the summer after workouts they're doing their player run practices and a lot of them they go and work with a personal coach which we encourage Mm -hmm. you know I think the more football you know the the better off you're going to be so I wish I could say like it's one thing but it's really them and so it makes like they they make our job as coaches easier than it than it would be so uh, we'll focus on that alignment assignment technique that's yeah that's what we'll focus on
I feel like one of the unfortunate parts about football is injuries are just a given. Like, it's going to happen. You're going to be playing your second, third, and fourth string guys at some point during the season. How do you feel about your depth right now? E and I, we talk a lot about our personnel with the defensive line and with the front. And we both feel that three groups, our three deep, yeah. are winning players. Meaning awesome. like, we feel confident we can go in and, and compete and win games with these three groups of guys. So I think the depth is there. And like you mentioned, you know, the injuries, like you, you hate to see them, but you, you just got to be prepared for if or whenever they do happen. But we feel really confident about our three deep right now. That's awesome. And my last question for you is you and Gennaro have anything in the works as, as far as videos and stuff for the season? Hey, I'm gonna I miss throw seeing this man, those. It's been a while. I'm going to throw this man under the bus. Like I was ready to ride. He... He always, You're getting, oh, so Coach I, thought Lamb. Was, I thought it was Gennaro. I'm like, Lamb. oh, bring that him in been, here. That would have been really Bring him awesome. in here so we he can hear what I got to say. <laughs> Cougar Nation, Gennaro Guilford claimed he had a flat tire all last fall. That is why we did not ride. That is why we did not ride. All right? I'm personally going to take my his bike in and fix his tire for him so he can ride. But like I say, he got a little soft on me last year. You know, all of a sudden, like I said, it's it's the pride cycle, like entitlement. Yeah. You know, okay, like pride cycle. The, the, year we, the year we were riding bikes, you know, DBs played pretty good, and all of a sudden Coach Gill doesn't think he needs to ride his bike to <laughs> fall camp anymore. You know, like what, what's going on? You know, so hold this guy accountable. We'll, we'll see. Come on, we'll, we'll see. But hey, man, like even coaches need to, you know, you you need to run some checks and balances on coaches too. Yeah, heck yeah. I'm talking to Cougars defensive ends and hybrids coach Preston Hadley. Preston, I appreciate you taking the time and coming on with me today. Absolutely. Always a pleasure. Thanks so much. And that does it for us today. Thanks again to Gunnar Romney and Preston Hadley for coming on the show with me. You can join the Cougar Tailgate virtually, of course, every Saturday at noon Mountain Time or download, rate, and review our podcast on Apple, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, or on BYUradio.org. This is Cougar Tailgate. Cougar Tailgate.